This is Vince Russo's The Brand. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Alternative TV. I am your host, Brandon Stransky, and I am all fired up today. We're going to have a great show, although I do have to kind of keep it a little bit on the down low because I don't really, you know, got to share this house with some people, don't really want to disturb them. But, you know, all fired up, so you're going to be getting a lot out of me today. Have a lot to go over, a couple of new things I want to introduce. Uh, I'm going to start off the show with a few opening thoughts. Going to start doing this from now on. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the. Uh, just a couple opening things. The big first one is the hurricanes that have been devastating the U.S. or the southern uh, coast, southern, eastern coastal area of the U.S. these last couple of weeks. Uh, of course, always thoughts and prayers are with them. And if you haven't sent any kind of donation or any kind of aid or something out there, I inc uh, strongly encourage you to do so. Those people out there could really use any kind of help that they need. Um, and speaking of the hurricanes, uh, this has led to something that uh, as much as I hate to give this guy credit for, this is the first person I heard say it, Alex Jones, something he calls Trump derangement syndrome, which is clearly a real thing. Just see, just the way that, and, I'll, and I'll get to get out of the way, I am not a Trump guy, did not vote for him, do not support him. However, the way people are reacting to things and him is getting so completely out of hand. Like people cheering for hurricanes destroying people's lives because of who they voted for. Like, what is wrong with you? Why are you celebrating someone else's misfortune because of who they voted for? Don't be like the people you claim to, to disagree with. Be better than them. What happened to the love Trump's hate you people wanted to push so hard after the election? <sighs> and of course, uh, we recently had the anniversary of one of the worst things to ever happen in in our country's history, which I'm talking about the anniversary of 9-11. Uh, and that's something that still haunts us to this day, something that still haunts us in the fact that we're still murdering people over that had nothing to do with it. We're still restrict, we're still doing horrible things to people over here that had nothing to do with it. And this, it's just gotta stop, man. We gotta stop acting with our emotions and stop think and start thinking with our heads again. This is getting out of control. We just need to America, not just America, but the entire world at large, it needs to kind of take a step back, put their emotions to the side, and think with their heads and not with their emotions. This is so getting completely out of control. Uh, a new segment I'd like to introduce this week uh, may not be around every week, but it will be there when it warrants. It's something I like to call Stay in Your Lane. Basically, what that is is whenever somebody who wants to run their mouth about something they have no business running their mouth about, I'm going to go ahead and give them, do them a favor and remind them that they need to stay in their lane. And the first person I want to remind to stay in their lane is one Miss Jennifer Lawrence. Now, back to what I had said earlier, I am not a fan of Trump, did not vote for him, do not support him at all. However, I'm not like some of these people, especially the nut jobs in Hollywood who think that they, because of who they are and what they do and how much money they have, they can be complete idiots. Like Miss Jennifer Lawrence, who wanted to, made a, I don't know the exact quote, but basically, uh, she's basically saying that the hurricanes that we had are a result of Trump being our president. Oh, I, it, I, 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 uh, it's, it's getting out of control how stupid these people are getting. We, like I, like I just got done saying, we need to think using this, not my precious feelings. This is how I feel. This is what reality is. No, what reality is, is what reality is. Not to bend to the whims of whatever kind of BS you want to believe in. And with that being said, I would like to take us to our next segment. 
which is probably my favorite one to do, Melting Snowflakes, and we have our first three-peat appearance. Uh, like I said before, I don't really want to give this person's name because I, you know, because first it gives him attention and publicity, plus it also opens him up to harassment from people, which we really don't want. So let's go ahead and call him Heel Manager because he actually is an indie heel manager, so let's call him that from now on. Heel Manager had stated, If the internet had been around in the 1940s, I wonder if there would have been idiot Pearl Harbor truthers. Well... I don't know if there would have been, you know, Pearl Harbor truthers since we know for a fact that we, you know, we saw Japanese fighter pilots bomb those bomb Pearl Harbor. So we know that it was carried out by the Japanese government and the Japanese military. No question there who was behind that. However, I'm pretty because so there's no question about that. But I'm pretty sure that there are people in, 19, in the 1940s that were dumb enough that if you told them that it was carried out by people hiding out in caves, they'd believe it pretty certainly. You know, the same kind of people hiding out in caves who managed to pull out a logistics nightmare that was 9-11 without any kind of outside help. They did it all on their own, nobody helping them. But let's, you know, let's, let's, let's not question the official story because we want to believe that our government's doing the best that it can for us because we don't know any better. Ooh, like I said, I'm fired up today, folks. I got a lot I want to talk about and a lot going on in the news. Let's move it on to Alterna News. First thing, the big thing everybody's talking about is Ted Cruz apparently liking porn on Twitter. Apparently that's more important and what bigger discussion point than the fact that America is now $20 trillion in debt. But hey, let's pay attention to what a senator's looking at on Twitter. Uh, WWE's attendance. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures of this band, but uh, I worry for the WWE. I'm really concerned for them. Uh, the fact that I'm seeing, again, this is just, you know, looking back and just going through looking at stuff, it's really looking like WWE is, I'm seeing a lot of parallels between them and WCW in their dying days. And just a few, few examples, uh, cut, uh, Cutting Pyro, uh, SummerSlam, their last pay-per-view, their second biggest show of the year, and they had their SmackDown entrance set for it. Nothing special, no, you know, Super cool entrance set. No, nothing special about that to make it stand out or anything. It looked like a regular show. Nothing about it stood out. Now, I know, you know, it you know, costs a lot of money, but this is the WWE we're talking about. And if they can't shell out enough money to buy a set, a, a unique set for their second biggest show of the year, that right there should tell you there's some financial problems going on that, you're, that they're not telling us. Uh, the fact that, too, I've been noticing the way they zoom in on the crowd. How they're kind of le like only showing the first section of the audience, whereas you know, if you went back in time ten years ago, you'd be able to you know they'd show the first you know the second section, the third section, and then when you see the pictures that people are taking at these shows and posting them up online, you're seeing a ton of empty seats, and it just like it looks like I'm watching an arena from like WCW 2000, and that's not a knock on the product at that time. It's just it wasn't the between the various factors that were going on, it just was not drawing a crowd at that time and it needed to be and as you know we all know we it needed to be built back up but there was you know that's a whole nother you know thing to talk about not really wanting to point any fingers that's just stating a fact and that's where I see WWE going right now is their attendances are down ratings are down you know how show business has fallen off 75 percent in the last 20 years that's insane and they and it looks like they're starting to get their act together. I'll take baby steps as long as we're having forward. As long as we're moving forward, I will take. I don't care if it's you know baby steps or a giant leap. As long as we're moving forward, I will take it.
this week on Restoring the Republic. Big, big thing that's going on right now is health care. And there is one simple solution that I would do when it comes to fixing our health care problem. Right now, the Democrats are trying to expand government influence in health care. If it were me, I would be going the other direction. Because right, the problems that we have with our health care system right now is because government is involved. Because they are picking the winners and the losers and siding with the whoever can give them the most money. And it's just, it's just, and that, and then the, now the answer they have the solution to that is, well, let's get more government involved in it. It's like, to me, that is the equivalent of a fire truck showing up at a burning house and, in, and instead of hooking the hose up to a fire hydrant, they hook it up to the gas tank. That's exactly what that is. And if we want to fix the situation, we need to get the government out of it and go back to free market economics and capitalism to fix it. That is the reason why a diabetic cannot walk into a pharmacy and be able to buy his insulin out of pocket and not bankrupt himself. Why somebody, you know, who's uh, a, 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 another example, somebody who is trans can't walk into a pharmacy and be able to buy, buy the hormones that they want to, you know, to transition because government is in the way. And then on to our final thoughts. Kind of, well, let's go ahead and tie it into the final thoughts for today's show. Medicare for all. I know it's going to make a lot of people unhappy. They're probably going to think that I don't want to help people, that I'm a selfish, greedy person for saying this. Quite the opposite. That's the fact that I am not a greedy, selfish person. The reason the fact that I want people to be able to have them be able to take care of themselves is why I oppose this. I don't want to see a Charlie Guard happen over here. That the, all this time I've been sold. They try to sell us on this is what's going to be best for everybody. So make sure everybody's taken care of and nobody's going to fall through the cracks. And now this child was denied a shot at living because of because the government runs the healthcare system and basically decides who wins and who loses instead of leaving it up to the people that are there to try to do their best to be able to find the health care that best fits them instead of having it forced on them by a tyrannical government. <sighs> I'm sorry guys, this is just this is just something that uh sorry, let me re let me reset my thoughts here. I just I I can't support this. I can't. Because that because the fact that the government is involved is what's causing the problems in the first place. And until we get it out of it, instead of expanding its involvement in it, we're never gonna fix this problem and it's only going to get worse. The VA, I, I'm sure you've all heard the horror stories about that. That's single. That's basically government funded health. That's basically government spot, government socialized health care. And the fact that how many I think it's like sixty something people have died waiting for service there. And we want to bring that, expand it to everybody in the country. No, sorry, I can't get behind that. The only way we're gonna fix this is let the free market do its thing. That's my belief. I stand by that, and I am certainly open to debate and discussion as long as we remain civil and respectful. So I think at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We just have different ideas on how to get there. And once we realize that, I think we're going to start making forward progress and learn to be able to you know, understand and know where each other is coming from. Uh, I just want to thank you guys again for watching. Again, you can always follow me at bsrider67. Oh, and now I remember what I was going to do. Now I remembered. Now I remembered it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before we go, I just want to... This is this is what I was trying to get to. This is for you. And this one's for you, Miss, uh, Miss Chantel. Because I know you're a big hockey person. This one's especially for you. And for everybody. But...
the point I'm trying to make with the free market, especially when it comes to healthcare, is when you keep putting restrictions, keep putting regulations on it, and then blaming the free market for failing would be the equivalent of getting a Wayne Gretzky in his prime on your team, giving him shoddy equipment with like dull skates, a bad stick, a blurry visor, and then slapping ankle cuffs on his ankles, and then he's not scoring any goals, and you're going, why are you not scoring any goals? We brought you in here to score goals, and you're obviously failing. We need to replace you. It's the same thing as that. That's what I personally equated to because that's what seems to make the most amount of sense, you know, period. But anyway, again, thank you all for watching. You can always catch me on at BSRider67 on Twitter. Be sure you check out all the great um, personalities we have here at Vince Russo's The Brand, and I will see you all next week.